Now we're going to start out with a simpler example. Um, let's go ahead with if we're given z equal to square root x squared plus 2xy and x is equal to cosine theta and y is equal to sine theta. And we want to find dz d theta. in terms of x, y, and theta. All right, so um, kind of the hint that we should be doing a chain rule thing is that I am supposed to find dz d theta, but when I look at my equation for z, I see it depends on x and y, and those depend on theta. So that tells me this is going to be helpful if I can use this rule for chain rules instead of having to plug everything in and then take partial derivatives and all that stuff. So I'm going to build my diagram first. Um, so kind of the thing I denoted by flower before is z and the thing I denoted by star before is theta. The thing on top is going to go at the top of my diagram, the thing on bottom in my derivative, I try to find at the bottom of my diagram. And so I put z at the top of my diagram, and then I write down everything z depends on. So they told me z is equal to square root x squared plus 2xy. So I can see it depends on x, and it depends on y. So I'll go ahead and write those below z and then draw a line to show that z up here depends on x and y down here. And since I know this is going to end in taking partial derivatives, I may as well just take those right now. So dz dx, I'm going to be taking d dx of x squared plus 2xy to the 1 half power. So that's... Um, Actually, I'm going to move over so that I don't run out of space. So uh, 1 half times x squared plus 2xy to the minus 1 half power. And then multiply out front the derivatives of um, the interior with respect to x. So I've got 2x from the first term plus 2y from the second term. Uh, that looks good. And then I'm going to need dz dy. So that gave me that dependence. I want this one as well. So it's again going to give me a 1 half x squared plus 2xy to the minus a half. And then I have to multiply by the partial derivative of the interior with respect to y. That just gives me 2x. And I know I'll need this eventually, but um, I'm not using it quite yet. And I'll just write right there that I found dz dx and dz dy. And then at my next layer, I look at everything that x and y depend on. So x equals cosine theta. and y equals sine theta. So I can see that x depends on theta, so I should put a theta down here, and y depends on theta. And so I'm going to say, OK, these lines show me that x and y up here both depend on theta. And those lines represent that I have dx d theta. Mm. Actually, I may as well write it with the hard-sided d because x only depends on theta, and same for y. And so dx d theta is going to be minus sine theta, and dy d theta is cosine theta. And now comes the actual chain rule part. So all this was just making that diagram that 
tells me all the relationships. And I have to find my star, the thing in the bottom of my derivative in the bottom row, happens to be the only thing. And I try to reach it from my derivative at the top, or sorry, my variable at the top. So I can do it along this path. Or I can do it along this path. And so this one, if I go down the path, I'm supposed to take the products of every partial derivative that's represented along those lines. So I'm going to get hmm, D, oops. along that darker line I tried to draw, I'm going to have dz dx times dx d theta. I take this amount and just try to do something. Um, and multiply it by that amount. And then along the curvy line path, I have dz dy. Times dy d theta. I put those in quotes so you know that I'm not saying like minus and something weird there. And that's just coming from um, there's dz dy. And there's dy d theta. So start from the top, go down to the bottom, and just multiply all the lines that connect you. And then the last step is that I just add up all the products I just found, and that's going to be my or my chain rule. So I was trying to find dz d theta, and so I know it's going to be this plus this. So I'm going to have the first path, dz dx times dx d theta, plus the second path, dz dy times dy d theta. And then I already calculated all those amounts, so I can just go ahead and put them in my um, equation. It will get to be quite long. But I've got that 1 half, is it x squared plus 2xy? Okay. to the minus a half times that 2x plus 2y for my dz dx. And then my dx d theta was minus sine theta. And then I'm going to run out of room, so I'll go ahead and write plus right here, plus 1 half x squared plus 2xy to the minus a half times the partial derivative with respect to y had given us 2x. Um, there we go. And then dy d theta had given us just cosine theta, I think. And that would be your answer. Um, you could go ahead and put it in a big box. I won't do that because I did all these funny lines to try and show you where the different parts are coming from. And so it'll just look messy. The only warning I'll give you is if this had been required only in terms of theta, You need to go back and plug in x equals, I guess, cosine theta and y equals sine theta in your um, solution dz d theta. 
And that wasn't required here, but I just wanted to warn you that if you really want to see it um, kind of entirely in terms of theta, that is the last step you have to take. And so we'd left a little bit room here for kind of like an optional or only sometimes required thing. And so I'm saying you could plug in the functions for all intermediate variables. That is the ones that fell between z for us and theta for our example just now. In terms of only variables at the star level. We don't have to do that here, and it would actually get quite messy if we did. We'll do um, another example so that you can see this process again.